Hi y'all, I'm Amber and today I'm going to be doing my Christmas book haul. Not all these, I guess, you could consider as a Christmas gift because I did get them myself and it didn't come from a gift, like a gift card or anything, but I consider it as a Christmas haul just because it happened in December. I got these books because either I got them for free or I got them for very cheap with money that um, I was given and uh, with same with the book movies so first I'm just gonna talk about the movies and the first one I got was I Robot starring Will Smith this is a movie that I got from my dad because he was given for Christmas by me um, a sci-fi collection of films and this was one of them that was in there and so he had already had iRobot and I did not realize that so he gave this copy to me because I'm really excited to watch this. It's been like years and years since I watched it and I don't remember if I liked it or not but hopefully I do. If you do not know this is in a world where like robots rule the world basically and he is trying to fight against them. At least that's what I think. Then I got Goodwill Hunting starring Robin Williams and Matt Damon. This is about Will who is really really smart. I guess you would call him a genius. He is now working as a janitor in a university and this math teacher, he is a teacher of this very complicated math and he puts up on the board outside of the classroom this math problem that nobody can really solve and it takes a lot of work and he never really expected anybody to solve it but when he was working at night, well I mean he sees the problem and he solves it and they're trying to figure out who did it and eventually he figures out that he's the one that solved it but he ends up in jail. It's basically about how Will ends up being this math teacher student and how he is forced to work with a psychologist to deal with his issues. I really love this film. I've been wanting to have it in my collection for a long, long time so I'm super happy to finally have it. Then I got Parkland. This is about the assassination of JFK but not in the typical way because you, the story will usually go with the actual people involved like the family but this time it's about the people surrounding the event the nurses the doctors the special forces the FBI agents who all had something to do with the events and how they had to handle that situation I find this idea very intriguing and I'm hoping that I like it. Zac Efron plays in it, also Billy Bob Thornton. So I really have pretty high expectations for this because I think that a lot of these actors are really good actors. I'm on the fence about Zac Efron but everybody else I think are really good actors so like as I said, high expectations. Then for Christmas, I got Maleficent by, from my brother. This stars Angelina Jolie. I am not a Angelina Jolie fan. I know she does a lot of good things, but as an actress, I just, I just like see her in worship. I really just, I, the way she, I don't know, presents herself is just problematically. I just think she's very, I don't want to say it, but here she stuck up and full of herself to a point, and I just, I don't see no shade in her. I just, I don't see no shade in her. I just, I don't see no shade in her. I just, I don't see no shade in her. I just, I don't see no shade in her. I just, I don't see no shade in her. I just, I don't see no shade in her. I just, I don't see no shade in her. I just, I don't see no shade in her. I just, I don't see no shade in her. I just, I don't see no shade in her. I just, I don't see no shade in her. I just, I don't see no shade in her. I just, I don't see no shade in her. I just, I don't see no shade in her. I just, I don't see no that's why I was so willing to get this film. Also, this is more of a complex story. It's not very straightforward. It's not very, very tale-ish when it comes to the Sleeping Beauty, Beauty tale. This takes the perspective of Maleficent and, and it's like, is she really as bad as the fairy tale say she is? And so I'm really excited to finally get a chance to watch this. My brother also got me How to Drain Your Dragon 2. I've already seen this and I love the first and I love this one. Also, I owned the first one for a long time. I bought that myself years ago and I've been wanting to have this also in my collection. I, I love it. I love Toothless. I love Hiccup and I just really love the animation in this. It's just a really sweet, wonderful, fun, adventurous tale and I think that they did a great job with this. Then my mom got me West Wing for Christmas. I did not ask for this and I was quite surprised that I saw it, but I am so so stoked that I got this just because I have been interested in this TV series for a long time and now I finally have it. I can just watch it straight through. I'm not exactly sure what this is about. All I know is about a bunch of people who work in the White House or around the White House. So 
yeah, we'll see what I think about it. Now on to the books. These are the books that I got myself, or I was given, or I got for free. The first one is A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. I wasn't supposed to buy any more Dickens until I read Oliver Twist, which has been on my shelf for at least, at least five years, but I couldn't resist it when I found this for only 50 cents, and I just had to grab it up. I watched several versions of Christmas Tale every year since I was a kid, and I just never picked up the actual book, and so I am very happy and thrilled to have it in my collection. Then I got The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest by Stieg Larsson. Then I got The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest by Stieg Larsson. This is the third book in the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo trilogy, and I enjoyed very much the first book, but I never really got past it, and I've been wanting to have all three of them, so when I finally got to it, I would just be able to steam right through all of them at once. I finally found this for pretty cheap. It was only $4, and it was pretty close to being exactly the same as the other books. I don't know why I was being particular about this, but I did not want it on hardcover. I did want it in math market paperback because that's the way I bought it. But for some reason, this is taller than the other ones. I don't really understand that, but it's basically the same in the design and everything as the others. So, I don't really care. Overall, I'm just so happy that I finally at least found it in mass paperback. I'm very happy to have all of them. Then I got two short novels by Henry James. This is The Turn of the Screw and Daisy Miller. I did not realize this was a horror story until I got home, but either way, I think I will like it. I'm hoping that I will. I'm not really into horror just because I can get really scared pretty easily. Not always. It depends on how well they write the story. I'm not really sure about the story, um, but don't care. It was super cheap and I've been wanting to read Henry James for a while, so I had my chance. Then I grabbed up Passion and Prejudice by Sally Bingham. This is a memoir and I got this one for free. I don't really know all a lot about what this is. I just saw that it was a memoir and I grabbed it up just because I wanted to get into more memoirs and stuff like that, especially after I read Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert. So this was something I just I couldn't help. It was free. So I was like, why not? And either way, this sounds like a very dark, scandalous story. And I'm not really sure who the Bingham family is exactly, but I will definitely be finding out when I read this. <laughs> I got This Legend of Sleepy Hollow and other stories of by Washington Irving. I saw this and I had to grab it up. It was only 50 cents, so that was a deal. But also because I've been wanting to read The Legend of Sleepy Hollow for at least two years now, ever since the TV show Sleepy Hollow came out and I knew that it was based off of this, I just had to get my hands on this. And so I'm very, very happy that I have. I really am excited to finally get to read the original story and see what it is all about. Then I got Fortress Women by Kay Gibbons. This is about two people who you would never think would fall in love, but for some reason they do, and it's just their story. It's very short, so I'm not really sure like how this is going to work, but We'll see, and it was free, so I just was like, whatever, I'm going to grab it up. Oh my goodness, this dog! Ah! My mom was out of town, and she was so nice enough to get to this. She was at a used bookstore in San Diego, and this was one of the books that she saw and found that I haven't read of Jodie B. Colts. This is Handle with Care. This is about this couple who's five-year-old daughter has a disability or illness or something. I'm not really sure exactly what it is, but she is needs a lot of special care. But the child is very, you know, sweet and smart and wise. But, you know, as every parent would, they have these what if, like, what if they had done this? What if they had did this? Or, you know, what if they had decided this way or that way? But it didn't really matter, those what ifs were kind of small and it didn't really affect them in any way until a series of events happens and then the questions become bigger, like what if the, she should have 
seen this coming and all this stuff and so it's just kind of about that these questions and how they're gonna handle that I'm very intrigued by this I'm not really sure where this is going to go but I'm excited to see what what happens as you all know I am a Jodie Bicolt fan so I'm just so excited I, don't, I have never actually counted how many of her books I have I should do that I should I also got Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. This was a free book, which I think is rightfully so because of how dirty it is, but it is readable, so I don't care. I saw this on Ariel Bissett's channel. Her brother was reading this for the Christmas book tube that they were doing, and he described it, but all I can remember is that it has to do with psychology. And when I saw this at the library, I was like, I must have psychology. It's one of those things I'm very interested in. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. The last book that I got myself was The Eloquence of the Hedgehog by Muriel Barbary. And this is about tenants of a hotel and they and how their lives kind of intertwine with one another. I'm not really sure. I'm going this kind of blind, but I am very excited to have this. I've been wanting to read this for many years. Every time I go to Barnes and Noble, I would see this and I just really like the title and a bit of the synopsis and so I was just like I must have and I finally found this at the library for 50 cents and so I was like <laughs> ah, here it is here it is in my possession on to the books that I got for Christmas for my mom and dad the first book was given to me was No Country for Old Men by Cormac McCarthy you all know I've talked about this a lot, so I'm not going to say anything other than that. I'm really glad that I have this in my collection because it was a book that stuck with me, so I feel like it's worthy to be on my shelves. Then I was also given House Rules by Jodi Bicolt. I've read this like maybe four or five years ago, I just never had the opportunity to buy it. And thankfully my mom grabbed it up for me. This one is about Jacob Hunt who has Asperger's Syndrome and because of that he struggles socially. So his mother has given him a tutor to help him to be able to understand people and to be able to communicate better. But one day when he shows up for his session, he finds her dead and, and he ends up being accused of her murder. I found this book really wonderfully written. I loved it all the way through. It's been a while, so who knows where my opinion is going to end up now, but I don't see that changing. Then I was given Fight Club by Chuck Palahniuk. This is another book that I've talked about before, and I'm not going to talk much about it here. The protagonist in this book meets a guy named Trevor who has created this club called the Fight Club, and it's just this really crazy whirlwind of their relationship. I just... Mm, I'm not going to say anything because we, we all know how much I love this book and I've been wanting this book on my shelves ever since I read it. Then I got On the Road by Jack Kerouac and this is a semi-autobiographical book about this guy who goes on a road trip with a bunch of his friends and that's basically all I know or remember of the synopsis. People say that you shouldn't read the original scroll but my mom got me the original scroll. I don't think she really realized that that was um, something that people don't um, believe that you should do be because it can be pretty hard but I love a challenge and I really don't care I think that this is going to be a very interesting read and I just really love the way that this book looks it's just so beautiful and I I feel like it's so clean with the way that they did the words and the lines and everything here and I'm just really excited. Then I was given this hunker of a book, Under the Dome by Stephen King. I've read several of his books and I really enjoy his writing and his stories so I'm very intrigued by this one. This is about a town and one day the town is covered by an invisible dome and when it comes over their town people die or get injured and they have to try to find a way out of the dome and to survive while they are, they are under the dome. And I've heard from somebody who has read this recently is that it's more of a character study than anything else and I love that because I am into character study books and so it's just when they really delve into the actual characters and the story of those people I think that's very interesting especially because in this situation where they're in a very difficult thing and they just trying to survive I think it's going to be very intriguing to see where he puts all of these people. I was also given 
100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. And I don't remember what this is about. It's been a while since I've read the synopsis, but I saw this at Barnes and Noble. I and I was like, I must have. And so when my mom was asking me what I wanted, I showed her this at one point. And so I was just so happy when I actually saw this, when I opened it up. It's just, it's so, so beautiful. I, I just love it. And it really works well with my shelves because I have several other books in this kind of edition that they have given out. So I was very, very happy with having this and it's just it smells beautiful it looks beautiful it's just wonderful and i'm so happy to have it it's just now on to the crazy bit this is the last thing that i got and it is the eight books of anna green gable series these are all eight of them i'm not showing you because i did trade out the new books with the old so i'm not going to show you those ready books but i will wasn't actually asking for this one. I My mom got confused. I was actually asking for these ones, but she got me these and I'm very glad that she did because I've been needing to have ones that are like where I can read them because these books had gotten so bad that I haven't, I have no way of reading them through these. So I'm very happy with that. Like I'm very grateful. I just wasn't expecting all eight of the book. Let's talk about these because I thought I had researched it up and I should have I should have just let it go when we were at Barnes and Noble the day after but I went and I looked and I saw these and she basically forced me to have them and I really wasn't expecting her to get them I wasn't asking I was just showing her uh, it wasn't until the day after when I realized my mistake I'm really angry with Aladdin I am so pissed off about it because I don't see the logic in this i don't understand it at all it doesn't make sense and so i just like my mind is just so twisted with this i, I can't understand why they would do that they skipped the fourth book i thought this was Wendy poplar it wasn't it's Anne's house of dreams and when i went to look up all this again i realized that not only do they not have Anna Whitney Poplars. They also don't ha have Anna Ingalls side. They don't. They didn't publish them. They published all the other books, but those two. And I'm so confused as to why they would do that. It doesn't make sense to me, and it really frustrates me because I was really looking forward to be able to collect all of these because these were the first books that I really liked and that I knew that the, that I at least I thought I knew that they were gonna have them all in eight beautiful covers. So. I'm really frustrated with this and I wish we could have returned it but my mom got rid of the receipt without thinking. Um, I mean, she usually doesn't do that. This time she did and uh, I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. So now I'm basically using this as a decoration for my shelves. It's such a huge disappointment and I feel so bad because mom spent good money on this. But I am so thankful for all that I got this month for Christmas and I just it, I was not really expecting this much and I got way more than I thought I would have got it and so I'm just so very happy and grateful and this was a wonderful month and tell me down below what you got this Christmas or what you got yourself for Christmas I would love to know thank you guys so much for watching and keep warm